Hey there, hey there, family. Bless you in the name of Jesus. Uh, it is 5.58 p.m. and it's August 10th, 2021. It's a Tuesday and I just want to uh, kind of talk to you a little bit, uh, throw some things out there, give you some things to think about for all my nine viewers out there. The, the nine that'll get this video. Lord bless the nine. Hallelujah. Um, you know, but I'll tell you, we're living in the last days, my friend, and uh, you either believe that or you don't, you know, and, 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 you know, the truth and reality is, is one of the most frustrating things as an apostle or the Lord Jesus is I'd love to come to you. Uh, I would love to come to you, you know, and, and uh, my, my goal, you know, uh, it's like I said in the Facebook live video today, I have three main objectives. One is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Number two is to bring the kingdom of heaven to the earth. And number three is to confront the devil, right? That's my job as an apostle, right? We, we confront the devil. And, you know, there's such a spirit of religion on Facebook um, and, and other places and social media, um, you know, that it's hard to deal with. It's hard to deal with, my friend. It's just part of the burden of, of being an apostle, you know. But I don't sweat it. I don't worry about it because God's given me all faith. I have all faith, beloved. And I pray that, you know, by the end of my life, you'll have all faith too. I have a, I have a friend of mine. He, he uh, is helping me. Uh, here with this YouTube channel, and he's ran into some problems uh, with uh, with YouTube. You know, uh, and he's a Muslim friend of mine. You say he's a Muslim? Yeah, he's a Muslim friend. You can't get anybody in the body of Christ to help you do anything. So you gotta uh, you gotta bless the Muslims to do it. Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but you know what? Um, he uh, he's ran into some problems, and so we're, we're going to pray through that. And eventually, I'll get a uh, thousand subscribers. I'll be able to go uh, on this channel live, and uh, yeah, I'm just excited to do that, my friend. Uh, you know, there's nothing more exciting than sharing the word of God, and uh, and and whenever you stand up in the spirit and power and demonstration of the Lord, Jesus Christ is glorified. Jesus Christ is communicated. And, you know, it, uh, it's a small thing for me to be judged of any man. And, you know, uh, one of the reasons that the Apostle Paul, he told the Corinthian church, he said, uh, I, didn't come, I don't come to you in uh, words of man's wisdom and, and all of this kind of eloquence. Uh, I came and, I, and I'm preaching Christ and him crucified because that's all the wisdom you need. You know, and when you pre preach Christ and Him crucified, well, what are you preaching? You're preaching about the death, the burial, and the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is what we stand in, which is what we operate in. And at the end of this life, my friend, um, I'm going to be raised from the dead. Oh, they're going to party on the streets of Jerusalem, my friend, at my death. And, uh, you know, they're going to exchange gifts and they're going to think it's a merry, merry Christmas. But then the Spirit of God is going to come and breathe, breathe life back into my body. And I am going to be resurrected, meet the Lord in the air, my friend. And, and the rest of the body of Christ is going to disappear with me. You know, all except for the 144th owl. I call it the 144th owl. The 144,000 Jews that are going to be left behind to evangelize, and they're going to be in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty during the last three and a half years of the Antichrist, the devil, and the false prophet, right, of the tribulation. And my friend, whether you realize it or not, you're in the tribulation. Oh, it's already begun, my friend. And um, if you don't believe that, well, uh, I guess you're, you know, blind, you know, um, and, you know, I don't care if you're pre-trib or mid-trib or post-trib or any of that, you know, we're in the now-trib. The body of Christ is in tribulation 
now. Right. And so that's why the Lord has uh, set me apart and he has sent me here as a messenger, as an ambassador, as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we can come into the knowledge of the truth. Right. And the truth is, is that uh, many people, they're stuck. They're stuck in religion. You know, and and the the really a lot of what my ministry is going to have to do is it's going to be to reveal the heart of man, the reveal reveal the heart of man, right? Um, the the man's heart is sick. You know, with, without without Jesus Christ, you know they're just they're hard hearted, they're full of the deceitfulness of sin. And so uh, the reason that COVID-19 is so prevalent here in America uh, and around the world, it's part of the supernatural grace of God, but also the judgment of God. Oh, we're under judgment here in the United States of America. Because why? Because the, the Lord wants the body of Christ to unite in the spirit, in the bond of peace. And my friend, it's not going to get any better. Not until we uh, cross denominational lines and we begin to humble ourselves. We begin to turn from our, our ways and acknowledge the Lord. It ain't going to get any better. You know? And I'm not here to preach a gloom and doom message to you, but I'm just here, you know, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, my friend. And so, uh, you know, the Bible is the only book that can speak to you about your past, your present, and your future. It's the only book, right? There's such, there's such life in the pages of the Word of God that when you dive into it, uh, uh, you see yourself as beholding yourself in a mirror. And the Word of God examines you. The Word of God, it judges you. Right? And see, if you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, well, your righteousness judges you. Right? And, it's, and so when we stand before the bema of the judgment seat, of Christ, it's a matter of reward, not punishment. You see, the great white throne is going to be reserved for the people that chose to outright, outrightly not believe. By the end of my ministry, uh, uh, beloved, uh, the uh, there's not going to be hardly anybody. Uh, um, of course, I'm speaking by faith. There's not going to be hardly anybody, you know, uh, that's left behind unless you're an atheist or a Satanist. Right? That's all that's going to be left. By the time that my ministry is said and done and over with, and either I'm a liar and a lunatic or he's the Lord of my life. You know? That's what Jesus Christ is, my friend. Now, Jesus Christ, well, he was either a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. Which is he? He's Lord. And he's the Lord of my life. He's changed my life. When he came to me in 2013, it made the difference. My friend, he explained to me uh, I was going to be uh, used as an instrument of righteousness, right? Uh, 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 that I would be set apart. And, and uh, I'm just excited to be used of the Lord. But, you know, uh, the book of Jude, the Bible is relevant for today. It's relevant for today. It's always been relevant. It's, it's uh, mo uh, mostly, it's so accurate. It's more accurate than today's newspaper, newspaper. And I'll tell you, like, where we are in regards to technology. Well, what is, what is technology doing? Well, they're manipulating DNA. Right? They, they want to make a, a, a clone of you. 
if they could if they could manipulate your DNA, that's what they're gonna do. You know, if they can uh, do any kind of thing to come against the creation of God and try to control people, make make you their slave, that's what they're doing. You know, that's what CERN's doing right now. CERN is doing all kinds of things uh, uh, scientifically to where they are actually opening uh, the portal of hell. And, and, and they're actually, they're tapping into things they got no business tapping into because they want to try and um, overcome uh, death. They're, they're afraid of physical death. So the transhumanist agenda and the transhumanist movement, the satanic movement, is to stop physical death going around Christ. They want to ignore Jesus. They want to ignore the Bible. They want to ignore, you know, oh, that's not real. Uh, it's real. Jesus already conquered death, right? And my friend... I tell you, I mean, I've already been resurrected from the dead. You can believe that or not. But I've had so many miracles take place in my life. And the Lord's reserved me, you know, for such a time as this, that this ain't going to be but a light snack, you know? Uh, this, this ain't going to be nothing for the Lord to move in the miraculous and do what he does because that's who he is. Jesus Christ is God, my friend. Jesus Christ is God, and he's divine, right? He's holy, and, and because he lives in me, right? I, I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm set apart, and, and so are you. So you can be too, you know? And, and I don't struggle in areas of my faith, my friend. I just don't, you know? People... You know, they can come against the testimony of God if they want on my life. They can call me, they can call me a, a, a false apostle, a false prophet, or whatever. It doesn't bother me. I actually love it, you know. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I thrive. I thrive in uh, areas of persecution. I thrive in, in uh, rejection because... Uh, that's just how the Lord has ordained the grace of God on my life. You know, so it's no big thing for me. Um, but I'm here uh, for your furtherance and joy of faith. Right? And, and, and for you to be strengthened. For you to not be in fear. Because fear has torment. Are you being tormented today? You know, in some kind of area? Out in your life? Are you worried about something? I ain't got no worries. Uh, you know, it's all love, peace, and hair grease with me, my friend. I really don't have a worry in the world because I know the one who I totally have given my life over to. We're going to get into Re Revelation chapter 12, my friend. I'm going to explain the book of Revelation. And, I, and, and what I'm uh, teaching you, I didn't receive this from man. I received this by revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm going to tell you the whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? It says in Re Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. My, my friend, I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you right now, this woman represents the body of Christ, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And why is the sun above her head and the moon at her feet? I'll tell you why. Because all of creation is subject to the power of the body of Christ. All of creation. Why does she have 12 crown uh, or a crown of 12 stars on her head? Because it represents the 12 tribes of Israel that are scattered throughout all the nations right now. And the purpose and the will of God for the United States of America, my friend, is to get off our butts, quit being a bunch of selfish, uh, ungrateful people, 
and to begin to pool our money together, cross denominational lines, and go bless the nations. And that's what we're going to do. It says, and she being with child cried, right? Travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. You know, there's many people in the body of Christ right now, and we're crying out to the Lord. We're travailing, and we're, we're going through heartache and pain to be delivered. What are we going to deliver? We're going to deliver Jesus, my friend. We're going to deliver Jesus Christ. It says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, right? So what is this? Well, the great red dragon, right? It's, it's, it's the beast, right? Having seven heads. What do the seven heads represent? They represent the seven empires or the seven kingdoms, if you will, right? You have Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, um, the Medes, the Persians, the Greeks, Right? The Romans. Right? Now, in the last days, there's going to be a seventh empire, which is the revised Roman Empire, which is taking place. They're already in place. Right? And you can read in Daniel uh, 10, verse 20, where the prince of Greece, the prince of Persia, they have a... Uh, uh, a certain amount of rule over certain parts of the kingdoms and the nations. And there are demonic principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places that we're to battle. Right? Now, now, now the, the ten horns are going to be actually ten men, if you will, with... Um, Tremendous power given to uh, from the beast, you know, and 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 there's going to be seven crowns upon his head. Well, the devil he he tries to mimic everything that that God uh, does. He can't do anything original, right? So what's his plan? His plan is a uh, a. Uh, he has, you know, just like the, the, the crown of the 12 stars that represent the tribe of Israel. Well, well he has, you know, a seed, right? And, and his seed is part of the seven crowns mentioned that, you know, are, are going to be among the nations, right? That are of the devil's seed. They will not believe. They will not bow to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And what happens when you do that? Well, you, you know, demonic possession, it can take place and it starts in the area of your soul. It's a matter of how much you're demonized or not, right? And so, when, but when you become, when, when you are joined with the devil and you become one spirit with him. Well, you're in total possession. You're in total possession, total control. And, and that's exactly what's going to happen with the seven crowns mentioned here in the book of Revelation. They're, they're given, and it says here, verse 4, And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, talking about the angelic realm, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And that's the rapture, right? That's the great catching away, right? And, and, and as soon as Christ is birthed through the body of Christ, the last trumpet sounds, right? And we're caught up 
to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. But you've got to remember, there is the coming of the Lord for His saints and the coming of the Lord with His saints. Because don't you know, beloved, we judge angels. Oh, we're going to judge angels. And actually, in reality, we're judging them even now. We don't judge people. We judge angels. So it says this, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. So why is the woman fleeing into the wilderness? This is because this is the remnant of the 144,000 Jews that are going to be left on the earth during, during the last three and a half years of the reign of the Antichrist, right? And I'm telling you, in the last three and a half years the, the, of the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to make and reveal himself, right? The church is going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, and the total destruction and wrath of God is going to be poured out. Right? So it says this. Uh, and the woman fled in the winters where she had a place prepared of God. That they should feed her a thousand two hundred and three score days. It's twelve hundred and sixty days. Forty two months. And there was war in heaven. Right? And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought. And his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. My friend, part of this is happening now. There is, there is war in heaven. And if you look back on my last video, my friend, on Facebook, you'll see where I talked about that the devil, since he cannot uh, accuse anymore uh, the saints of God day and night, what's his tactic, right? He's, he was cast out of the third heaven. Well, Michael and the angels of heaven... They're fighting with me right now. They're fighting with you right now. If you're walking supernaturally in the will of God, they're fighting. And the devil has such an amount of time in the second heaven, if you will, to where, you know, the, the prince of Greece, the prince of Persia, they're operating and they're they're operating behind the scenes in, in areas and in, uh, the form of government with kings, governors, presidents that are deceived, that are deceived, that I have not submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And so, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan was deceived at the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is salvation come, or is come salvation, strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So Satan doesn't have access anymore to accuse the people of God. Well, how does he do it then? He tries to come to you through a messenger of Satan, through a, the demonic, or he will try to buffet you personally. Right? And he will try to come against you, make you feel con condemnation, make you feel guilt, 
in some kind of way, make you feel fearful in some kind of way. Oh, that's what he wants to do. He wants to keep you in fear, wants to keep you in doubt, wants to keep you in unbelief. That's what demons do. The doctrine of demons is unbelief. Right? So he can't accuse us anymore day and night. And they overcame him. How do we overcome him? By the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. And so, this is where we are, beloved. I tell you, I mean, this is where we are. I, I, I overcome the devil on a daily basis. This is what I'm here for. I'm here to stomp on the neck of the devil. But I'm here to train and equip you where you can do what I do. Where you and your most holy faith can be built up. And you can pray. In the Holy Spirit. My friend, if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, you're not walking in the fullness of God, in the full authority of God. Oh, you're, the Holy Spirit is resident in your life. Upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, He becomes resident. You're sealed. You're on your way to heaven. But you're not walking in the fullness of God unless you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. And this is why I'm here to release the spirit of Elijah over you, beloved, uh, uh, to, to where you won't have a fear. I mean, what? this is what I don't get. I mean, people aren't living the abundant life in Christ because of two things. The fear of man or the fear of death. I have neither. I'm already dead. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet not I, but Christ Jesus lived in me. And the life that I live now in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And because Colossians 2, 15, I believe, says how he triumphed openly over the devil, the demons, right? So do I. So do you. And the quicker you get the revelation, you know, the quicker that we can actually see the hand of the Lord that's already, the Holy Spirit is being poured out uh, over the nations, the Holy Spirit's being poured out. My friend, if you believed half of what I was telling you, if what I'm telling you right now, you'd share this video. That's the reality of it. And and I, listen, I'm not trying to manipulate or control you or intimidate you or make you feel uh, uh, guilty in any kind of way. I, I mean, the Holy Spirit isn't about that. I mean, but but that's the truth. Like, like me, love me, hate me, I don't care. I'm here to tell you the truth in love. You know, and, and it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to wash your feet. It really is. I, I'm just a servant. If, if you lack, and if you are, are lacking in any good gift, my friend, then there's more honor bestowed upon you. In the body of Christ, you know, and and um, let's read on. It says in verse 12, therefore rejoice ye heavens. You know, a lot of time, any, most of the time when the Bible refers to the heavens, it's referring to the saints of God. It says, therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. So what's he going to do? Oh, he's going to try to persecute the 144,000 that 
are left on the earth that are evangelizing. And I got good news for you, my friend. I talked to the Lord about it. And uh, you know what? I get, I get, we get to help to uh, uh, deliver hell to the devil. But while we're in heaven, we actually, you know, we get to uh, go back and forth and help people during, you know, the, the, the great tribulation and this stuff being poured out. Oh, I don't know about you, my friend. I'm looking forward to that. You know, and if I got to die twice, I will. I mean, the devil can just kill me on the streets of Jerusalem and then uh, I'll come back. You know, and then the, the devil can kill me. I don't care. He can kill me over and over again. Doesn't matter to me. That's not going to happen because, you know, I'm going to have my glorified body. My friend, that's what we're waiting on. We're waiting for the last enemy to be defeated, which is death. The last enemy is death. Well, for the believer, death and judgment are behind us. But the Lord, by His grace, because He's long-suffering, He is allowing you and I to get a hold of the revelation, you know, uh, and, and fight. Fight with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the angelic, Angels that are assigned? My friend, you have guardian angels that have been assigned to you since birth. Now, you have the, the demons and the angelic realm that operates today. And they all they're trying to do is keep you from walking in the authoritative power of God. The perfect will of God. That's all their, their goal is. Because if you are in Christ, then you were with him before the foundation of the world. You were slain with Jesus before the foundation of the world. So now their only, their only goal that they can do is try to keep you from the five crowns. Well, how many crowns do you want? You know, how many crowns do you want? I'm getting all five of them. Promise. You got the crown of rejoicing, the crown of righteousness, the crown of glory, the incorruptible crown, the crown of life. You know? And, and, and you know, you have a, a, a crown for those that endure temptation, for those that love the appearing of Jesus, for those that are soul winners. Right For those that receive Jesus into their heart, their life, for those that love uh, not their lives unto death, that are willing to die, if need be, for the gospel. Oh, we have great reward in heaven, beloved. But the, the question is, do you see yourself there? Do you see yourself there? And see, the Lord is long-suffering because He's not willing that any should perish. He doesn't want any to perish. And, and, and beloved, I just, I tell you, I'm here, you know, uh, uh, to speak the truth in love. Right? It says this, right? Verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast on the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. So, this is part of the protection of the Lord by the power of the Holy Spirit for the 144,000, right? And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. 
and the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. My beloved, this is the 144,000 that have the testimony of Jesus Christ in the last uh, part of the tribulation. And it's our job as the remnant body of Christ at the beginning of the tribulation to go disciple nations and to seal uh, the 144,000 of the Jewish Israelites that are going to be left here during the tribulation to evangelize, right? And to uh, save those that are willing, you know, because many people, unfortunately, they're, 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 they're not going to listen, you know, and they're going to be left behind. But God is mercy. Beloved, God is so merciful. I, I, you know, if anything you take out of this message, believe that God is just. Believe that God is righteous. He's not willing that any should perish. And even if you're left behind, you know, you're going to be given a period, if, if you will, of grace to receive the Lord Jesus. But, you know, the truth and reality is, <laughs> I'm laughing at him screeching, right? The truth and reality is, is that if you're left behind during the, the last three and a half years of the tribulation and the Antichrist reveals himself, well, then you're going to have to die a martyr's death like me, right? And, and, and I don't want that to happen. And the Lord Jesus doesn't want that to happen. You know, but, but he sent me here to tell you. And, and why? Because the Lord's merciful. And because the Lord is always a step of the, ahead of the devil. Always. And the Lord isn't willing that any should perish, but that all should have eternal life. He is not going to come like a thief in the night to the bride. You know, I, I hear people say all the time, well, the Lord can come any minute. The Lord can come any minute. Well, it's not true. I, I mean, crucify me, if you will. Whatever. I don't care. It's not true. Prophecy is still having to be fulfilled. And the Lord is long-suffering. So why would the Lord show up, right, you know, tomorrow... And, 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 and so many people would be having to give an answer to the Lord. Well, the Lord still has to reach them. The Lord's still calling. The Lord's still ministering His Holy Spirit. And many of you that are saved, you're just so full of religion. You know, that, that, that the Lord is pour, wanting to pour His Holy Spirit out on you. But you've been deceived by the doctrine of demons, which is unbelief, or you've been led astray by the gospel according to brother so-and-so. You know, you've been so stuck in theology, which is of the devil. I mean, you can say what you want. Uh, uh, it's not, you know, it's not of the devil to study the word of God. But when you put theology above revelation, well, you know, well, if there's no supernatural revelation of the Holy Spirit, well, shut up and close the book. It's that simple. You know, you got all these theologians running around out there, like they got God figured out. And they don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. That, that's the reality of it. And I say that in love. The only one that's not very loving, brother. Well, you know what? It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. And Jesus 
He, he, he's either a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. This, this book is true or it's not. Which is it? You know? I mean, it, it shouldn't be any big surprise. Shouldn't be a big shocker. You know, that I'm here. And I'm just here to make disciples. I'm here to, to, to be a servant. To wash your feet. To get you to snap out of it. It's not about your 401k. It's not about your retirement. You know, you. I, I, I mean, and you, you, if you serve the Lord, I'm not taking away anything from you. I'm not, and 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 the Lord has not forgotten your labor of love. But if if we're not careful, we can reach. A, a place of stagnation and become stagnant. And the Lord doesn't want you stagnant. The Lord wants you. To, and let me tell you something. He's coming for a bride that is without spot and blemish. He ain't coming for a bride that's all afraid of COVID-19. He's not. He's coming for a bride that is... Uh, allowed the Holy Spirit to purify them, to make them holy, acceptable, accepted in the beloved. That's what you are. You know, that's what you are. And, uh, you know, the Lord in His grace has set me aside for such a time as this because, you know, uh, there's so many uh, uh, schisms and isms and division in the body, you know, uh, and, the, and, the, and the body of Christ is so carnal right now. If I were to come to church, you'd throw me out. You'd throw me out. You know, or, or some Freemason, you know, would get upset, you know, and get all their, their feathers ruffled. And that's what I'm here to do, my friend. I could care less. If you're a Satanist, the Freemason, Illuminati, it, you know, I, I tell you what you can do. You can go pray real, real hard and wake the beast up. All right. And have him come make war with me. That's what you do. Okay. All right. I mean, come do something about me. I'm not going away. I promise. I'm not going away. I'm here to fight the good fight of faith. And I'm going to beat you with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yay! <laughs> In the joy of the Holy Spirit, my friend, that's what it's all about. Do you have the joy of the Holy Spirit today? Are, are, you know, are, are, do you? It's because some Christians I encounter, I mean, they just, they don't have very much joy. And Lord bless them. Lord be with them. Hallelujah. And, you know, I mean, I, I don't, you know, this is uh, to the Muslim, the Hindu, the Buddhist, Satanist, Freemason, Illuminati, Jesus Christ, Lord, he's coming soon. This is the king's governor's presence. Every tongue, tribe, and nation, Catholic, Presbyterian, Methodist, Baptist, Lutheran, Episcopal, Pentecostal, Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saint, Jehovah's Witness, Jesus Christ is Lord. He's coming soon. Will you receive the gift of salvation? Will you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord? Believe in your heart unto righteousness to the glory of God the Father that He's forgiven you of your sin, past, present, future. Believe that He died, was buried, and on the third day He rose victorious over death, hell, the grave, sin. And He wants to give you life. He wants to give you life, and life more abundantly. And so that's what I pray for, and I pray that you would get baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. My friend, you got to understand prayer is, is the understanding that He's the giver and I'm the receiver. 
Well, he's given me everything pertaining to life and godliness. And every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of light. So if I believe that, well, I can just receive. You, you know, I don't care about what your background is or what your religious tradition. Would you just receive the Holy Spirit? Would you say, Lord, I come to you as a little child. I receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now. And begin to pray with your spirit. That's what I pray for. I command the Spirit of the Lord to fall over people that get a hold of this video. Baptize them in the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, let them know thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, teach them to pray in the tongues of men and of angels. Teach them to pray the divine perfect will of God for their life. This is what I pray. Lord, to step in to the Holy of Holies. Lord, they're there. They're there. Lord, help them to see that they are raised up together with you, Lord Jesus, seated with you in heavenly places. That's not where we're going to be one day. That's where we are now, positionally. Let, let them pray in the Spirit. And pray with the understanding. Oh, Lord, that the eyes of their heart would be in light. Lord, that they would be strengthened in the inner man and woman. In the Spirit of God. Lord, teach them. Give them all faith. Give them a peace that passes all understanding. Heal their sickness. Heal their disease. Heal their mind. Father, right now, Lord, I, I just, I lead people through deliverance. If you get a hold of this video and you would say, Stephen, I, I feel like I'm plagued by the demonic forces. Well, I, I challenge you, you know, you may have had the Jesus Christ, he breaks the yoke of the enemy and he breaks generational curses right and so i pray right now that you would just begin to confess jesus christ lord and begin to say lord if there is any familiar demonic spirit that has tried to come against me and my family lord jesus i break that generational curse right now i plead the blood of jesus over my life wash me cleanse me fill me with the power of the holy spirit hit them lord zap them by the power of the holy spirit father this is what i pray and and my friend you begin to uh renounce the things of the devil maybe things that you've uh, come in contact with no knowingly or unknowingly and you just say lord i i want to be a vessel father fill me enable me give me boldness give me strength lord build me up in my most holy faith see when we pray in the holy spirit it's like uh uh it gives a picture of a house being built the foundation is jesus Right? And as we pray in the Spirit, He builds that house to where we become totally secure, totally complete, totally healed, totally have the ability to rely on the Spirit of God. It says the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, what's the Spirit willing to do? The Spirit is willing to pray always and the spirit wants you to pray the lord jesus christ wants to fill you with the power of the holy spirit so you will know that it's not just jesus that sits at the right hand of god the father making intercession for us but it's christ in you the hope of glory right so christ in you is praying is interceding on behalf of those that don't know how to pray. They don't know how. They haven't been able to yield themselves as servants to obey. 
Because they haven't come to the knowledge of the truth. They haven't been able to grow up to perfect men, complete men and women, right, in Christ, according to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is exactly what the Lord is doing in these last days. He's pouring out His Spirit on all flesh. God bless you. I'm praying for you. If you have a prayer request, write it down in the comments. I'd love to pray for you. My friend, you can follow me as I follow Jesus on Power and His Presence International. Right here, YouTube, Apostle Stephen Drake. Instagram, Stephen Drake 45. TikTok, Elijah 4031. And I pray you can partner with this ministry because it's all about discipling the nations, right? And so that's what it's about. God bless you. I love you.